Climate change impacts all of us. And it's something that people are very aware of and very concerned about for themselves and the future of their communities. I think it's easy to just get overwhelmed by this fuzzy concept of climate change. But when you start to realize what we can locally do about this, then suddenly this big fuzzy problem starts to become a little more manageable. Climate change affects everyone across the world. We need everyone in this fight. It's not just a climate activist, it's not just a scientist. No matter who you are, where you are, you can change the course of history by just simply doing one thing. When we have more greenhouse gas emissions, we tend to see increased temperatures all over the city. But areas that are impacted the most tend to be areas that also have less green space. So when I say green space, I'm talking about tree canopy cover and just overall areas where you don't have these heat absorbing surfaces. There tends to be heat islands as well. Unless residents have a way to remediate this extreme heat, we will expect to see a lower life expectancy. Certain communities who might not have air conditioning or maybe work outside, we see higher amounts of health risks. You're talking about a community that's predominantly black, indigenous, and people of color. In order to you know, have that many air filters and AC running 24 seven, just imagine how much that costs. We don't have enough money to be paying for that energy bill. I'm Brad Rumble. I'm principal of Esperanza Elementary School in Westlake, just west of the skyscrapers of downtown Los Angeles. So here at Esperanza Elementary, part of what we do every day is to integrate nature into the lives of all the students on campus. Today, right now, we're finding specimens. We're sketching them and labeling them. We have a schoolyard habitat of a little more than 4,000 square feet. For a child who's three, five, seven years old, that's a really big space. I mean, that's a wilderness. And it's a canvas as well for educators. What species? A monarch, exactly. So the plant that is on will help you identify what that is. Is this one? So make sure you get a picture of the plant. We provide a simple grassroots solution on a school campus because what we're really trying to do is create a new generation of children who truly understand the importance of nature because they experience it. There's like this plant that had like red spots on it. We're excited to find out what it is or what's it gonna be. I found a, a butterfly. It looked like a cabbage white. I found some bees, flies, and I've also seen a moth once. The other day I was in the habitat during recess and a boy came in and just sat at the bench on the south side of the habitat and just took a deep breath and stared at those shrubs. And I saw that just release and that connection to what was before him. For him, that was his recess. For me, having class inside, it's pretty normal. But when you're outside in nature, you feel kind of relaxed and calm. I like coming here because it's also quiet and I like uh, having sometimes the bugs in my hands or seeing like a bird like a minute ago, there was the red-tailed hawk flying past again. So this little patch of land on our campus really does provide um, just a tremendous habitat for such a variety of, of creatures. We've had a burrowing owl show up, and one year it overwintered. It was here for about 31 days. And can you imagine having seven, 800 students on campus and a burrowing owl coexisting? 
And the, the incidental learning that came out of that is extraordinary. The students became experts on this species. When a student walks onto this campus, the student is coming from an apartment building in the center of downtown Los Angeles, where maybe there's a patio made of concrete, or maybe a sidewalk. There's no child here who can just jump on his or her bike and go play on Wilshire Boulevard or run down to the creek or run up to the hill. Simply, those spaces don't exist. At home, I just see these, like, mostly just pigeons, not like red-tailed hawks or like barely any butterflies because I'm like really high up my building. A health co-benefit from a climate policy or climate action is the additional benefit that you get from acting on a climate issue. It's the benefit that you also get from health. For example, if we increase the amount of walking areas in a city, we are decreasing the amount of cars. But the added co-benefit that we get from that is we are also increasing our time outside walking and improving our health. The conversion of 4,500 square feet of asphalt can be so meaningful for a school community. So for example, when it rains, instead of the water draining from the asphalt into the drain and out to the ocean, the water remains right there to percolate and inform the growth of the native plants that are there, which is a beautiful thing. At the same time, the asphalt that has been removed now allows the sun to hit the plants over time, with the removal of more and more asphalt, the urban heat island effect lessens. Not only are we adding cooling areas, but we tend to also see more people utilizing outdoor spaces and increasing their health that way. So they get the added co-benefit from increasing green space, capturing more carbon, and also increasing people's time outdoors and exercising. So where do you start? Well, you start with what's within your control, okay? And so we have a campus, we have space, and we have time. So in 2015, when we planted, we started with small plants, and we involved the students and their parents with every aspect of this because that builds a sense of pride, a sense of ownership, but also a sense of curiosity. And over time, we really watched the transformation of this, the, the space. Years ago, uh, mm, this bush was like way tinier. Uh, there is an ant hill over there, actually. On a personal level, in my own backyard, not only are the trees providing the benefit of carbon capture, but it's also providing us with a wonderful environment in which to spend our time. We get the added benefit of eating the healthy fruit from our trees and just the overall increase in our happiness of being out there and spending time with our family. When I was directly impacted and I found out about these issues, I think not only was I scared, but I was angry because my community, after all, thought this was normal. But nothing about this is normal. But I also am really hopeful because I know that if I were to speak out, if I were to educate my community, that they can do something about this. There's not one person that is responsible for climate change. It's something that we need to collectively act on together. And I think if you're able to change your habits, you're able to change the way you as an individual are impacting the planet, that's all the better. That brings me joy, but also what are you doing to impact the system? 
even writing your own policy, I was able to do that in Los Angeles County. And that's something that I was able to do at age 19. So young people are always able to make change. They just have to pursue it and go ahead and do it. Thank you.